Hello, I'm Stephen Alvarez speaking to you from the Ancient Art Archive studio in Sewanee, Tennessee. We're a nonprofit that preserves and shares humanity's oldest stories, rock art and cave art around the planet. One of the most common questions that I get from our Instagram feed or from my personal Instagram feed, S. Alvarez photo, is how do you shoot images like this? Where you see the night sky, how do you shoot astrophotography? And I, I thought I would make a video that, that walks through not just what the settings are for this particular image or images like this, but, but to walk through the process of shooting a, a photograph. So first off, let me tell you where we are. We are right now in this image in the Basin and Range National Monument. And this photograph comes from a National Geographic Ancient Art Archive project to document rock art in eight national monuments that were studied for reduction. And so the Basin and Range National Monument was one of them. For those of you who aren't familiar, Basin and Range is a monument north of Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's one of the most remote places in the lower 48 states, and it's home to fabulous, fabulous rock art, including these figures. Um, this is called a Paranagate uh, anthropomorphic image, and they're only known from the Paranagate Valley north of Las Vegas. Oftentimes, rock art's highly localized. And these images are only known from a handful of sites in Lincoln County, Nevada. So how do you make a pho photograph like this? Um, I, I like using the night sky a lot when I photograph rock art because it gives you a sense of time and a sense of scale that, that's not necessarily there otherwise. It's just one more visual metaphor that you can fall back on. You can't do it all the time, but sometimes it's really appropriate. So the first step in making an image like this is to, to pre-visualize the, the picture. And I oftentimes spend weeks, days, weeks, months, thinking about a photograph and thinking about how to put it together. I knew about this piece of rock art. I went up and scouted it and shot it in the daytime. And, and this particular style of art, because it's not deeply incised, looks best when it's shot in flat light. And so I shot it in the morning, shot it in the evening, and it faces west, more or less. Um, but in order to shoot it at night, I knew I wanted this Milky Way arcing through the background like this. You know, I wanted it coming up. I wanted the Milky Way shooting up out of this gap in the rocks. So you, there are a couple of tools I use. That, um, one of them is a star tracker application. So you can stand in front of that piece of art and look at the, the application on your phone. And you can pre-visualize. You can see where the Milky Way is going to lay out at different times of, of the night. And so then I, I positioned the camera low so I got a lot of night sky and, and set the photograph up. Um, shooting the Milky Way in particular, you will want a very wide lens. This image is shot with a uh, 11 to 24 millimeter lens, pulled back all the way to 12 millimeters. So it is a super, super wide lens. And it, um, it gives you a great big expanse of the sky. Remember, the Milky Way is a huge thing. And to see it, you, you need a really wide lens to kind of bring in the whole expanse. The 11 to 24, this is a Canon uh, that I actually use on a Sony camera. Um, 16 to 35 works really well, pulled back to 16. Um, so you'll need a wide lens, super wide. You'll need a tripod to put, your to put the camera on. Um, this is the little one that I use oftentimes. I own a bunch of tripods. Um, and you'll need some way to trigger the camera, so I use a remote. And then the most important thing that you'll use is a high-quality DSLR camera. Um, any of the current generation DSLRs are fantastic in low light. This particular image 
this particular image, is shot on a Sony a7 III. It's a 20 megapixel camera, full-size sensor, that is extraordinarily good in low light, and it's one of the reasons that I bought the camera, is to use to make images like this. So in the daytime, when you can still see everything, you go and set up and you figure out where the, cam where the, the camera should be. So that's always your first step in, in kind of any photographic situation, is establishing the camera position. And once that's set, I've, I've got a challenge. The challenge is to put some light on this figure. You know, put some light on this figure, but not so much light that it matches, that you blow out the figure compared to the stars. What you're trying to do there is you're trying to balance the light on the figure to starlight, and starlight is incredibly dim, so you just want to put a little kiss of light on it. And what I've, I've chosen to do in making images like this, both here and elsewhere, is to use a video light. And this particular one is shot with a, it's a little torch LED, and you can turn these, these lights all the way down. And I have this thing turned on so there is just a kiss of light coming off. You can barely even see the light in that image. Because what you're trying to do is match starlight, and the stars are really dim. So you're matching starlight. Now, I've shot the night sky a lot. I started doing it years ago um, on assignment for National Geographic. And it used to be really, really hard. Images like this one um, from Easter Island, when I made this photograph, I actually had to have the camera on an equatorial head that tracks the night sky because it's a six minute exposure. And in six minutes, stars move a lot. So if the camera is still, you only get moving star trails. And I didn't want streaks in the stars, so what I did was I, I put the camera on an equatorial head. I, this is on Easter Island, and I pointed it at the Moai and uh, used a little bit of flash to freeze the, the, freeze the statues, and then I let the camera move. So there's, a, there's camera movement in there, but the stars are... are sharp, and that's the important thing. With a modern camera, this, this was almost a decade or more ago, but with a modern camera, they are so good in low light. So any of the newer Sonys, Canons, Nikons, um, Fujis, Olympus, any of the newest cameras, especially if it's a full-size sensor, will photograph the night sky in, in a reasonably short amount of time a pretty good base exposure for um, the Milky Way on a moonless night is F4 at 6400, ISO 6400 at um, 30 seconds. And in 30 seconds you get a little bit of star movement but with such a wide lens you don't see too much. Um, that's really not very much light so that's why we're only putting a kiss of light on the, on the figure. So I get, it, I get the camera set up, I get the light positioned, and you do that in the evening after the sun's gone down. And the sky's gonna go blue, especially if it's clear like this, because we're out in the desert. And set the camera up. Um, I use a remote control both to trigger the camera, but also to, to set time lapses. Because when I'm shooting this picture, you know, the night sky moves really beautifully. And so the thing, if you shoot multiple frames, you can put those together in a, in a time lapse. And so the sky, these stars will arc across that sky, and I'll show you that in a second. So you set all that up, and then work on your exposure. And you, if you go out after dinner time, after you've eaten, the sun's gone down, it's getting dark, <clears throat> you wanna work in, you wanna get the camera set up in the daylight so you can see what you're doing. Um, but, but even when it appears dark, it'll really be pretty bright. And you just sit out there and work on your exposure. Now, something I've learned shooting at night is your eye gets fooled pretty easily. Um, 
I recommend working with a headlamp on your head, especially if you have a headlamp that has a red lens on it. That way you still have night vision. You know, your, your pupil stays dilated and you can really see things. However, your camera is gonna throw you off because if you take a picture and then you look at the back of the camera, at the LCD screen back there, that image is gonna look pretty good. And then I guarantee you, you will get back home, get back to your office, download that picture, and it will be one to, one to three stops underexposed. <clears throat> What's happened is your, your pupil has dilated, so it's great big and it's letting in a lot of light. And it is really sensitive to the back of that screen. So you're gonna look at the back of the screen and you'll be fooled. And you'll, in fact, have an underexposed image. So you need to set your camera to look at the histogram. And that's just a graphic representation of the, of the image, of the exposure in the image. And you wanna make sure that that histogram is not all scrunched down on the black side. You wanna make sure that you have an arc in the middle. Now there will be a lot of black in an image like this, so it, it'll be weighted on that dark side, but you wanna just make sure it's not all shoved down there and clipped. And I've learned through really hard experience that you really, you've got to do it this way, that that's the only way to expose at night because otherwise you end up with, uh, with an image where everything looks good at night and then you go back and it's so disappointing because this thing that you thought was going to be great is two stops underexposed or four stops underexposed and you can't get to it. But what you do is you set all this stuff up and I tie my tripod down so it doesn't get knocked over by things at night and then... <clears throat> set the interval timer in, say, a Canon DSLR or a Nikon DSLR might have the timer inside it. The Sonys don't, so I use an external timer. And I set this thing to fire the camera every 35 seconds if I have a 30-second 30 expo 30 exposure. So it, it Every 35 seconds, the camera goes off. That's five, 30 seconds for the exposure, five seconds for the camera to write that file to the SD card. And then you can just let it run all night. You'll get your camera set up, you'll turn it on. In this case, because I know it's gonna be an all night long shoot, I have a big external battery plugged into the Sony's. <clears throat> That's another thing I love about the Sony cameras is I can take a, a great big 95 watt hour video battery and right off the D-tap, I can take a USB-C, plug it into the Sony and it will run it forever. Don't have to worry about battery power. The video light is on such low power that the, the battery that's on it will run it all night long. I don't worry about that. So I just get everything plugged in, I turn it on, and then I go away, I, I go and I lay down in my sleeping bag and I go to sleep, set my alarm for um, well before the sun comes up and then go back and turn everything off right as the sky is starting to get bright. Uh, another little trick I've learned is that it's a really good idea if you take your phone and you GPS mark where, where your camera is because um, Stumbling around in the dark, they can be kind of hard to find, and it's nice if you have a point on your map so you can go right back to it. Then you come back, turn everything off, um, wait for the sun to come up because you might get really great light then. I mean, here, look at this picture. This is right before the sun came up, same morning, and um, that light's pretty good too. Then take everything back and process it. But you can take that whole series of night photographs all of them, and run them through Lightroom and then drop them into a timeline in Premiere Pro and come out with a time lapse of the whole thing. A time lapse as that, this, the um, stars, the Milky Way rises above and it comes up and then arcs through the whole frame. And then what you can do is you can choose the image, the single photograph that you like most, and you can pull that up as your single image. So uh, I hope this has helped some to explain how we make images of the Milky Way, of stars at night. A good base exposure, F4, 
ISO 6400, 30 seconds. That's a good place to start. Have a good tripod, it will make your life easier. Buy a good head, I use Acrotech heads, they're great. Um, and experiment. Uh, the other thing is to make sure that everything is in focus and you're gonna be shooting wide open on the stars, right? So that's another reason to use a super wide lens so that you don't have depth of field issues. But go ahead, when it's light out, set your camera up, get your focus point set, then turn autofocus off because you don't want that camera hunting around for focus in the dark. This is Stephen Alvarez for the Ancient Art Archive. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you like the video, um, sign up, go follow the link in the description, sign up for our newsletter. We send things like this out periodically. Uh, the Ancient Art Archive is a nonprofit. We are dedicated to preserving and sharing humanity's oldest stories.